Kit Davy is somebody that I discovered on Instagram a year ago or so. And I just absolutely fell in love with her artwork, how playful it was, how imaginative it is for, and they're those tiny little artist books. Um, and she, I even learned something off of her YouTube videos of um, how she, on, on her studio space, talking about studio tours, she has this wonderful video on her, or had it on her, her YouTube channel um, on how she organizes it and everything. And it, it was inspiring. I wish I had that space. So Kit is a Redwood City based artist. She has been making her art and teaching paper artistry uh, to pull directly from her website uh, and bookmaking since 1993. Uh, it is definitely worth going to her website uh, and checking out her Instagram feed, but going to her website and seeing the types of art books that she has uh, and she's doing, and she teaches a lot of art uh, of some of these online as well. So I will cut this short and uh, welcome Kit. Thank you so much for the uh, introduction and also for the opportunity to uh, share with you um, a little bit about book arts. Uh, I love making books. Uh, they're interactive, uh, you feel them, Sometimes you can smell them. They make a noise when you turn the pages and uh, they're, they're dimensional. Um, so, and, and they're just, there's so much freedom in uh, using it as an art form. Um, so I wanna uh, mention first or, or, or ask uh, myself first, uh, what is an artist book? And I'm gonna go ahead and spotlight my hands now and I'll be, uh, spotlighting my hands for most of uh, the rest of the talk. So what is an artist book? Because I, I specialize in making artist books. And uh, one definition I saw is that it's a medium of artistic expression that uses the form or function of a book. Pretty simple, right? Uh, and lots of artists uh, who uh, use other media um, uh, create artist books, photographers, even sculptors, um, uh, and famous artists have, have made uh, either one-off books or sometimes editions, uh, multiple copies of a book. Okay, so, uh, but what is a book? What is, what is it, uh, what is that uh, form? What makes something um, have bookness? And I read this definition by, let's see, Philip Smith uh, in a newsletter about bookbinding. And he considers it something that is a packaging of multiple planes, not necessarily uh, paper or pages, that are held together in a fixed or variable sequence. And they're held together by some kind of hinging mechanism, support or container. And it's got content that could be visual or verbal or tactile. So I'll just show you the wide examples of, of uh, um, this definition. So there, here's multiple planes and they're held together in a sequence. Um, and then it's got visual content. So this is an interlocking um, fold book. Here's a book that uh, has a container. It's a case uh, and you interact with it. There are five uh, pockets and you can pull the cards out of the pockets and put them back. You can change the order. And then here's a, another book. It has an octagonal, or excuse me, a, a hexagonal shape. And you open it up, it unfurls. And uh, the spine or what it's held together with is just a simple pamphlet stitch. And each one of these, oh, and here's uh, another example of a book um, that it has uh, multiple planes and it's held together. This is a fixed sequence. And you can see that the spine or the hinging is like an accordion and it has uh, visual content. And in this case, um, each one of the openings um, is crisscrossed with a thread. This was in response to a bookmaking challenge called uh, Lines. So 
in each one of the openings, I stretched thread. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe if I do that, you can see the various threads through the windows. So um, the wonderful thing about book arts is that um, you have all a, a huge number of ways to create a book. Um, and it can be uh, tactile uh, and interactive. It can uh, be multiple shapes, but in order for it to be called a book, it needs to have uh, these uh, qualities. So um, I wanna show you first um, the, uh, some of the basic materials that you would use as a book artist. And that's another great thing about making uh, books is that uh, you don't need expensive tools and you don't need that many. So you, uh, a pair of scissors, a bone folder, this you use to um, uh, create folds and um, score lines, an X-Acto knife, and all to create holes um, in case you do uh, stitch binding and you need a, a variety of needles with um, a wax linen thread and they're all different colors and weights of those a pencil, a ruler, and this is a, a, my favorite ruler because you can see through it and make sure uh, that you're getting things at right angles. And you need a variety of paint brushes because uh, most book uh, makers use PVA glue. So those are the only tools that you really need to make, to make a book. And uh, in some books, you only need like three tools, which is fabuloso. Okay, I want to show you also some of the things that um, the materials that you can use to create a book. So the, the, the pages or the planes. So this, this book uh, I made with um, uh, a brown craft paper. And then this is clear acetate with rivets. So uh, if you've got brown wrapping paper or even paper bags, you can use that as a basis for a book. This book is made with postcards. So if you have a collection of, and the, the book's called Sterile Structures, of which there are many in the United States and other places. Um, and you can alter the postcards and the simple binding I used here is called the slip knot stitch. You don't need to use needles. Um, this book is made with maps, punched, uh, you know, I punched maps. And uh, the uh, pages are made from ledger paper. Here is a book, Nerd Stash. And uh, the, the pages are envelopes. And the images are from um, yearbooks. So you turn the pages. You can stash your nerd stuff in there. Um, uh, I, I take it that a lot of you are um, uh, two-dimensional artists and you do painting or perhaps printmaking, and you can use your cast off um, uh, prints uh, for, for making books. Um, this is an interactive book. This is a, uh, I have a printer friend and she had a lot of uh, boo-boos. And so the background paper in this book is uh, sections of, of one of her prints. And uh, you can also, the pages of a book can also be, um, uh, um, canvas uh, or, or fabric. Here is a book that's made from uh, these uh, slide holders. So I covered the, the uh, slides and inserted uh, images from uh, old encyclopedias and dictionaries. And I created a, uh, a, a uh, uh, binding that's kind of a, a modified accordion binding. So I'm just showing you uh, to tell you, I'm showing you a huge variety of the materials or papers that you can use. And uh, most people have a lot of these things hanging around, you know, an old yearbook. This book is made with uh, playing cards. So I just collage the front of each one of the uh, playing cards. And this is, uh, I think this book is called Birds and Shiny Containers. Um, and they're peeking out each one of them, but the, the uh, substrate or the pages are actually playing cards and a simple binding 
again, the slip knot stitch that doesn't require um, a lot of training. <laughs> and uh, this book, the pages are made from uh, postage stamps. Also installed on a simple uh, accordion binding, but each one of the pages is an individual stamp and contained in uh, a little matchbox, which, which I covered. You can, this is, this book is made from um, blueprints. I have a friend whose uh, father was a um, draftsman uh, long ago when they didn't do things on the computer. And she gave me several rolls of this beautiful cyanotype like uh, um, blueprint paper. Uh, old maps are fantastic for making books. And this book has a, a little belly band to hold it together. That's what they call this. It's like a belt for your book. <laughs> um, so when you open the book, you're treated to a whole series of cathedrals. And these images are from uh, old encyclopedias. It's really amazing how many churches are in encyclopedias. <laughs> Here we have a book that's made from uh, security envelopes. You know, when you get a bill from a company, the inside of the envelope usually has a pattern to conceal what's inside of it. So, and some of them are, are really pretty cool. And the, uh, I made little house shapes uh, that are actually envelopes to contain um, uh, little uh, cards that are cut from old envelopes, vintage envelopes, and some are contemporary too. Oh, can't get that one back in. Um, here is a book that I, I made the other day and it's out of um, tea bags. So I dried the tea bags cut the tea bags open and uh, slit down the side. And then I treated them with Mod Podge. So it's a really cool texture. It's kind of like um, uh, the, the old parchment. And then I added gold leaf. And the images are from uh, vintage dictionaries and um, encyclopedias. So I cut out these images one by one. And I have a collection of, uh, in categories of uh, images. I have containers of fish and birds, buildings, um, odd things. That's actually a category, <laughs> odd things. Um, and then you can make your own uh, paper. This is a flag book that I made and I, got the paper by um, photocopying this uh, table runner from uh, Guatemala. Um, so I put the uh, uh, fabric on the copier window and uh, ran it through. And then I turned the paper over, put it back in the tray and ran it through again so I could have double-sided paper. Um, and you can do that yourself. Uh, this, the, there are a lot of really good quality um, photo papers out there. So you can create your own customized uh, paper. I wanted to share with you a paper that, oh, and here's the, by the way, this is the paper that I get in bulk from um, uh, Amazon. It's uh, inkjet paper and it comes in uh, sets of 100. It's 49 pound weight and it receives the, the uh, copy of the color really, really well. And it's a lot less expensive. It's half the price of um, Canon copier paper. Uh, and so I make my own, um, my own uh, background paper for uh, my books. I just wanted to show you um, what I call Franken paper. So I save uh, bits and pieces of my, um, when I'm making books, and instead of throwing them away, I put them in my bit bag. 
And then every now and again, I go through and uh, on a substrate, this is just ledger paper, I'll glue all the, the little bits and pieces to create this uh, Franken paper, for lack of a better word. And here are some, when I've got really skinny pieces, I do them in, in strips. And I tend to do them in analogous colors uh, instead of a, a crazy quilt. I do it so that the colors are somewhat related to each other. And uh, here's a more muted neutral tones. And then I use that, those papers in, in making a book. So this is a kid's board book that I covered in uh, Franken paper. Um, they're little tiny strips of paper from my bit bag. Here's a, like a neutral panel. Um, this one is more like this um, analogous uh, yellows and golds. And here's one also in, in neutrals, but the other side is kind of pinks and purples. So don't throw away your paper scraps. You can use them uh, to create Franken paper. And they also make big, great backgrounds for, um, uh, for collages and books. Here's another book. Let me create some space here. I get so excited. <laughs> um, the pages of this book are from uh, plastic packaging. I know it's hard to see because uh, it, it, they're clear. Um, but I did tiny little Franken paper uh, collages and then I riveted them on the sheets of plastic. So each page is focused on a different color. Here's a green and, and I, I did both sides of this little tiny collage. So when you turn the, the page, you see the back of the collage. And once again, I use the slip knot stitch because it's easy and you can bind single pieces of, uh, or single pages. Um, let's see, I'm getting some questions and I'm not good about answering them because I get so excited about what I'm talking about. Um, uh, oh, I love this. Just when I thought I could start tossing stuff to clear the clutter, no, save all your papers. And uh, um, what type of glue do you use for your collage paper? I use uh, PVA. Uh, it's a polyvinyl adhesive. And there are other companies that make it, but I like Lineco. And the benefit of it is that it's, um, it dries pretty quickly. It's water soluble. It helps uh, smooth out wrinkles and bumps. And it is uh, archival. Um, so, uh, and I, I have different size brushes that I use to spread the, the glue on. Sometimes I'll use the, um, I have this thing called a glue bot. It's a container for my glue. And I don't know if you can see that G-L-U, and there's an umlaut on the U, dash B-O-T. And uh, I go through gallons of PVA because I make a book or two every day. And the, the benefit of this is that you can fill the top and then squeeze it and it aims your, your glue where, where you want it to go. Um, but yes, I use PVA. And let's see. So those, were, those are different materials. So I've shown you the tools, the, ge the general tools that, um, let me come back to my face. Um, let's see. And I'll add my spotlight. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, so I've shown you the basic tools and then the huge variety of papers that you can use to uh, create a book, but you don't necessarily have to use uh, papers. I've made books out of bottle caps, um, leather, where the, the pages are leather. Um, I've, I've done it with, uh, made books out of uh, flattened and treated leaves um, and uh, metal pages. Uh, uh, copper. I made books that where all the pages are copper. So you can use anything that you have in your know, recycling bin or any of the papers that you have um, and messing around with them. They can be the planes or the, the pages of, of your book. And uh, I wanted to show you some, I'm going to be blasting all different kinds of books at you. <laughs> 
but uh, I wanted to show you a basic structure it, uh, that um, is really easy. If you've never made an artist book before, an accordion book is the easiest way to go. So I'll just show you a basic, a couple basic uh, ones, but then I'll show you a riff off the basic structure. So um, here is an accordion book and it's called, This is How They're Made. So the, the, you can see that there's an accordion-like structure. So that's just one piece of paper and then it's got covers. So uh, it's called, This is How They're Made. And as the book stretches out, you see this um, kind of machine. And as you go further and further, you see, oh, it makes cats. And there's one right there. So this is a cat making machine. Um, basic structure, it's an a, a accordion book. Here's another larger accordion book. This is about nine by six. And uh, I culled out lots and lots of ladies' heads and then the um, title pages from uh, old books. So each page is a collage that has a title page and ladies, ladies' heads or more than heads in some cases. Um, but you see that it's the basic structure is an accordion book. Sorry, you, you, it's a, a big book, so it's kind of hard to see. Um, and then you can also, if you like to draw, um, I'm not really good at drawing, but I can give the, uh, um, and the impression of something. So this book is, was in response to uh, this book group that, I, that I'm in called Are You Book Enough? And the prompt was frozen. So I did a book called Frozen Food I Was Forced to Eat as a Child. And each one of the pages is a frozen food that I was forced to eat as a child. So green peas by bird's eye, Salisbury steak, remember that? <laughs> Fish fingers. Remember those? Some of you are too young to remember those. And macaroni and cheese with carrots and peas. Yum. And carrots, lima beans. Ew, I hated lima beans. The turkey dinner. And then finally, uh, green beans. So anyone can make an accordion book. Um, I want to show you very quickly how, how to do it. Um, I know there are some of my uh, students and friends are in the audience and they've made lots and lots of complicated books. So they're just gonna have to bear with me while I show you how to uh, make a, a basic accordion book. So this is what the book is gonna end up being. Map uh, to cover the covers and then a photocopy of a map. And this book is called, Where the Hell is Easy Street? And this is a, a map of uh, London. So what I did was photocopy it uh, on uh, my, my copier and it wasn't quite long enough. So I put a hinge right here. To, I, I, I cut out a piece that was so that I could get a, a total length here of, uh, I think it's 12 inches. And I added a little hinge and each one of the pages is gonna be two inches by, by three inches. So I'm gonna put it on my, um, handy dandy cutting mat that also has um, inch marks. And at every two inches, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, score it. Usually I put a tick mark there, but in the interest of time, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, wheel it. And then I'm gonna start folding. I'll fold in and back. And I'm doing this very quickly. Of course, I would take my time. Um, so there's my basic accordion book. And I've already covered one of the covers, but I'll show you how I cover covers. Here, I just use a mat board. Um, a lot of bookmakers use a baby board or book board. But since I focus mostly on smaller books, I use a just basic uh, mat board. And then I have a variety of uh, messed up brushes that I use for my glue. So I'm gonna add, um, I'm just adding some uh, PVA glue to the mat board. And I'm, I'm putting it on a, a piece of paper that's about half an inch larger than um, 
the mat and I'm gonna burnish it. Then I do a little wrapping or folding around the mat board. I trim off the excess, but I leave a tiny little bit right here. I'm doing this very quickly as you see. And I need paper to cover my work surface. So when I uh, wrap a cover, I usually do the long sides first to stretch the paper around the mat board. Okay. And then I'll do the shorter sides next. And sometimes you end up with uh, really pointy edges. So you just use the edge of your scissors and tap that, smooth it out. Okay, and now I'm ready to uh, install my book between the covers. So I, I uh, oh, look at a little ant. Um, I use, I put the glue on the uh, page rather than the cover. And then I'll make sure that it's facing right side up pretty much. I'll install that. Oh, this will be, it'll be like this. Yeah, that's still good. Um, install it on the cover. Then I'll add glue to the last page. I'm doing a messy job, but I just want to be uh, quick about my, my demo here so I can show you more books. And then I center this over the bottom cover. I look down as I'm uh, positioning it and I install it so that it's centered over the front cover. And voila, you have your basic, uh, what you call a Corvian book, voila. Okay, now I wanna show you some riffs off of the accordion book though, because you don't just have to have a, a really boring book. Here is a simple uh, kind of braid that I put at each one of the folds. So it makes it a lot more interesting than just your basic accordion book. Another variation of the accordion book is to make it part of a, um, a larger um, piece. So I had a, a gift box, I cut an opening and added um, clear acetate. And then this is a collection of uh, Bakelite buttons and in the back, I installed a little pocket for this accordion book. And uh, Francesca Snippet is a button collector and it's her specimen guide. So there she is right there. And uh, button number four, that button right there is from Spain. Button number nine is from France and six, right there is from Austria and so on. So you can make uh, an uh, accordion book that's part of a larger piece. And let's see here. Here is an accordion book that I made called How to Make a Bird. So it's instructions in case you need to know. And there is there are multiple pockets. So it's one long strip that's an accordion and I uh, locked it behind the two uh, covers. These are mat board covers. And so the instructions are um, to pick an egg and then pick a beak, pick some legs, pick some feathers, and then you pick some wings. And then you put them all together and now you have a bird. Okay, and let's see, I have a few more uh, variations on the basic accordion book. 
this is a spinning accordion book. And so I cut openings in each one of the pages and installed on a thread, a cutout that looks like my dog. My dog's name is Flynn and he spins just like this when he's happy. So uh, this is a spinning accordion book. And then let's see here. Here is an accordion book that has some uh, pop-ups. So you turn the page and up pops a building. And the background is a, a map of Paris. So as when you look from above, you can see that it's an accordion. But to add interest, there's a pop-up on, on every page. Um, let's see here. Here is a, another accordion book where each one of the panels is an origami frame. And then I added a uh, gold leaf uh, on, in the picture, if you will, that's inserted in each one of the frames and added a, a, some architectural wonders on each one of the panels. And here, the, all, the last uh, accordion book I wanna show you is made from a button. So here's a large, uh, a vintage button and uh, each one of the pages, whoops, upside down and backwards. Each one of the pages is a scene from um, an Iranian miniature book, you know, mini miniature paintings. And uh, I installed them on a long uh, strip of, of ribbon and the each one of the pages accordions, um, and that is uh, the book structure, and it fits inside its its own little box. So those are the the that's the basic um, easy structure to start with if you want to get into bookmaking. But as you saw, there there are many many different kinds of or ways that you can riff off of the um, the uh, basic structure. And I, I'm getting a question here, where do I get my inspiration and come up with such a, a beautiful books? Oh, thank you. Um, I, I'm immersed in, in bookmaking. I'm in my studio six to eight hours a day. Um, I'm constantly thinking about them. And if I get an idea, um, I jot it down. I get ideas from Pinterest, from Instagram, um, from prompts like the Are You Book Enough? The uh, uh, monthly prompts get my mind churning on ways to create an answer to the prompt. Um, like the, I showed you two, one was the prompt was lines. And so the, the book that had the strings co continuing the lines and then the little book of drawings that the prompt was frozen. Um, and so my mind churns on uh, the possibilities uh, for answering that challenge. And I keep, uh, when I get an idea, I will put um, the contents, I'm not, I don't have this, yeah, here. The contents of uh, something that I think I'm going to make in a clear plastic sleeve. And then um, when, I, when I get the materials that I think will uh, work for that, and I have the enthusiasm to make that particular book, I'll take out the, the clear plastic sleeve and the ingredients and work on that. And I like right now I have probably 25 or 30 different um, books in the pipeline. Um, so yeah, I get my inspiration from a lot of different places. And uh, I, if I get the, the germ of an idea, I capture it and then uh, put it in the lineup of, of possible books that I can, I can make. Um, I wanted to show you uh, some books that are they fulfill the uh, concept of what a book is, you know, multiple planes that are contained and have content. And so this is, this is called a tunnel book. And you can see it's quite dimensional. It can be flattened down and then it can spring up to create a, a dimensional effect. So that's a tunnel book. I showed you a flag book, but here's, this is a bookmaking joke. 
So the, the structure is called a flag book and I made it with flags. Get it? Get it? <laughs> so here's a flag book. And the, the uh, pages are actually from uh, an old encyclopedia that had two pages of um, national flags. Um, here's a book that is all about uh, structure. It's not so much about the content, it's just about the sculptural uh, quality of the book. And each one of the flowers or openings, if you will, is, is a Turkish map fold, but it, it, I doubled it. So it um, has a more flower-like effect. Um, and then this is a, uh, this is book also is, is about structure. And it's a, uh, a kind of a flag book, but one that has um, triangles that pass through the openings. And so it's not so much about words or images, it's about shape. And it's also your interaction with, with the book. Here's an, another book, I call it the, the um, double mountain book because it has mountains here and mountains here. Um, and this also is a more sculptural book. It has ins and outs and ins and outs. And the, the valley is joined to the mountain of the row of um, mountains behind it. And here is a book that it's made with, uh, it's called a piano hinge book. And because it looks like the hinge of uh, the, a piano uh, lid. And so it's more, a, it's not about, you see that this book doesn't really have content at this point. It's more about uh, the, the structure of the book. And here's another book, I call this a ruffled sphere. So it, when you open it, it unfurls and it become, it can become a sphere. And each one of these pages um, kind of pops down and out. So it's, it's still a book, but it's also a, a sculpture piece. And here's an, another book that's kind of sculptural. It is a, um, I call it a, a geodesic, an internal geodesic. When you look inside, it's a different color. You can't, it's hard to see on, on Zoom, but you can kind of see above that um, this shape, there's a, like a, um, what do they call that? Empty space. Um, the, there's a, a void inside, but it uh, creates a shape. And the book from the outside does, isn't your typical um, um, uh, book shape. And here I'll show you another um, kind of popular book. And it, it's, it's called a star book because when you open it, it has the shape of a star. Um, but each one of the pages is actually a, di a diorama. It has three levels, the back, the midground, and the foreground. So you can install things uh, in each one of those levels uh, to create a wonderful dimensionality. And here I used a, an old yearbook from the 60s. Very crowded. That school was very crowded and lots of nerds. <laughs> so that's a star book. And let's see, I can show you one other book that is about the, um, the structure of the book and not so much uh, the, the content. Okay, and then the last category of books that I wanted to show you is, um, boy, that completely covered up my, my area here, uh, is the, our, our structural, our, excuse me, intera interactive books. So it's one that really engages the person, your, your audience or the person that's looking at it. And I love those uh, because it, it's an experience rather than um, uh, the kind of book that you get at the library and you sit down and read it and it's more like an internal happening. This is actual, you have a physical relationship with the book. Um, so, this, is, this book is made of three circles. And when you turn them, uh, you read the first, the, the, 
small circle and then the middle circle and the outside circle. So this says I hide urges. Um, if you turn it this way, I yearn for tenderness. Uh, you trample tenderness, they hide strength. So it's, a, it's an interactive book. And once again, it fulfills all the qualities of bookness, but it's not your standard, your standard book. Um, this is my, my uh, toaster book. Oh, my hands just froze. Okay, they're unfrozen. Um, it's a toaster book. And you, when you open up the pages of the book, I don't, can, you can kind of see that up pops a, a card with a toaster on it and it fits back in. You turn the page and out pops a toaster. So you're having, uh, a, you know, you, you hear the book, you see the book, you interact with it, you touch it, it moves, you make it move. Um, here's another interactive book. It's, it's called a, uh, an iris book. And you, you, there's a, a wheel here. And when you turn uh, the lever, um, the iris opens and you get to see what's in the background. Okay, and another interactive book. This, this book was also uh, in response to the prompt uh, from Are You Book Enough called Open. So uh, this book is called Open and each one of the pages, and by the way, it's, a, it's an accordion book. Each one of the pages you need to inter interact with. So you open it up and inside here, there's a little rhino. The next one, there's a, a closed brain. There's an open brain. Um, that when your brain's open, you have you can take in other points of view. You have choice. Uh, you can go with the flow. And here's <clears throat> when the petals open, you get to see a little um, ladybug. And here, the closed hand drops the potato. And then uh, there's your heart, open heart. And then uh, the, here's the last one. I, I like this one the best. So there's a closed mouth and when it's open, there's, I don't know if you can see, but that's a frog. Um, let's see, I think I have time for one more interactive book. Um, so uh, this is like a spinning kaleidoscope where uh, you turn the wheel and there's actually two layers here behind that and you get kind of a trippy kaleidoscope effect. So the colors of this book were black, white, and red. So I just did various var variations and uh, did the uh, flower-like shape also in different directions. And it, it's held together. Uh, the binding is that simple slip knot stitch. So um, I was hoping that I would have some time to do a demo. And I think I can do a real quick one, but let's see. If, uh, any other questions? Have I missed a question? Okay. So um, I'm gonna make a book that's gonna end up looking like this. And by the way, on my website, I have probably eight different free tutorials. And the, the, there's a free tutorial on how to make this little house shape book. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, several others. And there are some on-demand classes for a fee. And then I have my live classes. I think I've got six or eight uh, live online classes uh, scheduled out um, through through March. And they posted my uh, website uh, in the chat. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to make this book. I think I've got enough time. So I'm gonna fold it in half. Use my bone folder, one of my tools. And then I'm gonna fold it in half this way. Then I'm gonna fold it in quarters. So I hope that if um, you're an artist of any medium that you will consider uh, making artist books. Another thing I, I like about artist books is that um, you don't have to have painting skill, um, 
or um, drawing skill. You can use scraps of paper uh, to uh, make your books or what's in your recycling bin. So it's a very accessible um, art form. Okay, so what I did was uh, I folded the paper in half, then I folded it in quarters this way and I've got eight equal sections. I drew a line from this corner down to this corner and another one here. And I'm going to be cutting here and here with my X-Acto knife. And as I said, I have this book structure on uh, my website and you can access the, the uh, video of how to make this book for free. Okay. And I'm gonna fold this like this and then I'm gonna kind of create a, uh, a diamond like shape in the middle and push those together like that and fold each one of the flaps down. Sometimes they want to fold back instead of forward. So there I have a house shape, a rectangular shape, a house shape. And what you can do to create pockets is just put a little bit of glue right here and right here on the bottom of each one of them. And uh, you end up with some pockets where you can insert, if you use an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, uh, an artist trading card, which is two and a half by three and a half will fit in each one of those pockets. Oh, I finished it just in time. So um, I'll come back to my, uh, my face. And I, I know I blasted you with a lot of uh, book forms and a lot of uh, information about book arts. Um, but it's because I wanna uh, expose you to all the possibilities and inspire you to perhaps make a, a book yourself um, using your own art or uh, odds and ends of things that you have around the house. It's, it's a wonderful art form. It's interactive, it's dimensional, and um, it's very fun. So uh, thank you for letting me share this evening. It, it was uh, very fun for me and uh, it was nice to meet you all. <laughs>